The Lord says, I want you to be a child always. Don't ever say to Jesus, I know what I'm doing now. Thank you, Lord, for your support. I don't need you anymore. I got it now. I can do it on my own. Now, since children need to be taught, the Lord Jesus said, I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit to dwell in you. And when the Holy Spirit comes, he will what? Teach you. Why? Because you are children and a child needs to be educated to be taught. So who is my teacher? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. The Lord, want, the Lord Jesus wants us to enter the school of the Holy Spirit. Since he is the teacher, there is a school and he wants us to come and enter the school of the Holy Spirit. The school of the Holy Spirit, we can divide it into three parts or three stages of education. Three subjects to be learned and to be taught by the Holy Spirit. What is the subject? You'll find that in the book of Acts, chapter 17, verse 28. Book of Acts, chapter 17, verse 28. Say, what what, they, what uh, Acts saying 17, 28? It says, in Him, in Him meaning the Holy Spirit. In Him we live, we move, and we exist. In Him we live and move and exist. So the Holy Spirit was sent by the Lord Jesus to be our teacher. He's going to teach us. What is He going to teach us? He's going to teach us to live in Him, to move in Him, and to exist in Him, or to be in Him. Exist in Him means to be in Him, instilled in Him. What is the difference between the three? To live in Him, i.e. the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit gives us life, whose life is the Holy Spirit giving us? The life of Christ. By the way, when I'm saying the Holy Spirit, I mean Christ. Even though they are three separate, unique persons in the, in the divine nature of the one holy God, even though they are three separate persons, there is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, three different persons in the Trinitarian God, but one in essence, one in nature. However, when I say the Holy Spirit, I mean Jesus Christ. Why? Since the Holy Spirit is the teacher. When you went to school, have you ever seen, when you entered the classroom, have you ever seen the teacher talking about him or herself or talking about the subject? When you go into the class, what does the teacher do? The teacher talks about the subject, not about themselves. You may go all your life to school and come out of school and all you know about the teacher may be their name, nothing else. Why? Because the teacher's job is not to talk about themselves, talk about the subject. The subject of the Holy Spirit is Jesus Christ. So the Holy Spirit as a teacher is to talk about the subject, not about himself. That's why the Lord Jesus said, the Holy Spirit when he comes, he will remind you, he will teach you everything I, Jesus, have said and done. So the Holy Spirit's role is to talk about Jesus because Jesus is the subject being taught. So the first subject is in him we live. The Holy Spirit came to give us the life of Christ. Now let's come and see in what way are we able to receive the life of Christ. And look at the subject, they've been placed in order. We live, we move, we be. When a child goes to school, the child cannot say to the parents or to the teacher, I don't want to go to year one. Can you please put me in year six straight away? Can they? 
the principal is going to say, you don't know what you're talking about. You cannot jump. You got to go to year one. When you finish year one and pass, you go to year two. When you finish year two and I'll pass, and you go to year three and then four and five and six and so on until you graduate. You cannot jump. You got to take it step at a time. When you jump, you fall and you miss the mark. That's why these subjects are put in absolute order. The first class one, in him we live. Year two, in him we move. Year three, in him we be. We exist, we are instilled. So, in him we live. We are, the Holy Spirit has given us the life of Christ. How? Why? Since he's given us that life, which is the beginning of the road, that's telling us all that we are all dead. That's why we need to live. Why is he giving us life? Because life is only given to someone who is dead, isn't it? You don't give life to someone who's already alive. It doesn't make sense. You only give life to the one who is dead. And why were we dead? Because we all broke God's word and by breaking God's word, sin entered. And the Holy Bible says, the wage of sin is death. Therefore, all of us broke God's word. All of us became sinners. And as sinners, the wage of sin is death. All of us became dead. That's why the Holy Spirit came as the teacher to give me the first subject who is Christ Jesus and to give me the life of Christ for us, the dead, to resurrect us. In the Gospel of Luke, chapter 15, the parable of the prodigal son. This son decided to walk away from his dad, and he said, Dad, I don't want to live with you anymore. That's the younger son. This father had two sons. The younger son came, said, Father, I don't want to live with you anymore. I want to be free. Like so many young people and women say to their parents, I want to be free. I don't want to live with you under your roof because you literally suffocating me. You're telling me don't do this, don't do that, don't go there, don't mix with this or that. You know, I'm sick and tired of this. I want to be free. I want to fly high. So the son decided to move out and he went out and he went into a very far off country and there he spent all the money that his dad gave him in absolutely nonsense things and then he ended up looking after some pigs in a pig's field and then one day he came to his senses and said my dad is a king and my dad in his castle in his mansion has so many servants they eat and they have extra food left over they just throw it out Yet I am the son of the king. The pigs are eating more than me and better than me. I'm going to go back to my dad and say, Dad, I have sinned against you and heaven. And I'm not worthy to be called your son. Make me a slave, a servant in your household. What did the father reply and say? My son was dead. And now he is alive. Maybe when we read this or when we hear it, we don't pay enough attention to what the father is really saying here. The son is coming back to his dad to tell dad that I'm not worthy to be called your son anymore. Please make me a servant. The father replied and said, my son was dead. What does that mean? My son was dead. He was trying to say to his son, Son, since you are dead, therefore you cannot be neither my son nor my servant, because a dead person can be nothing. 